Today I'm going to show you a great technique to create some realistic looking glass entirely in After Effects without any plugins. As you can see in this example, there's only really a few factors that make up what we see as glass. There's obviously the transparency, which is the most important, but then there's also the reflections and the refractions. The refractions are kind of the key to making realistic looking glass. And by refractions, I mean distortion, essentially. So where you see warped or distorted images or footage beneath the glass or through the glass, that's the distortion or the refraction that we want to get. So if I start a new composition, let's get started. 1920 by 1080. I could just use five seconds for now. And that's fine. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is create the shape we want for our glass. I'm going to create a shape using the shape layer tool, but you can use text or bring in an asset from elsewhere. Just be aware that you need to fill this as a solid color. So any details in your asset will be lost. So a flat shape or text works best. So I'm just going to create a triangle. So I'm going to grab the polygon tool. Let's just drop this down to three points to make this a triangle. There we go. I'm just going to scale this down as well. And this will be our glass for this example. So I'm just going to name this glass for now, and I'm just going to send this as well. So what we need to do is color this or use a fill effect. But as mine is a shape layer, I can use the fill up here but we want this to be 50% gray. The hex value for that being 80, 80, 80, or 808080. Okay. I will explain later why it needs to be 50% gray, but for now let's just move on to the next step, which is to bring in our image or footage underneath. So let's go to where I have my footage. Let's use the trees. So I'm just gonna bring this in. And then let's right click on our glass layer and pre-compose. Here we go. And let's call this glass map. Click OK. And then let's create an adjustment layer. So layer new adjustment layer. And in our effects, let's search for transform. Bring this onto our adjustment layer. We can turn off our glass map underneath so we can just see our just our footage and our adjustment layer on top. And on our adjustment layer, we want to, in our track mat, we want to select our glass map. And then in the transform we added, let's just increase the scale to around 110. And you'll see where our glass is, the footage underneath is now scaled up slightly. So it's sort of like magnified where we're looking through the glass or where the glass will be. And next, let's go back to our effects and presets and search for displacement map. I spell it correctly, displacement map, and bring this onto our adjustment layer also. And under displacement map layer, we want our glass map. These don't really need to be changed. It doesn't really affect it too much, but let's just change these to luminance. And then the max vertical and horizontal displacement is what we need to be playing with. But no matter what you do with these, you will see nothing happening. And that is going back to why our color is 50% gray. So if we were to go back into our glass map, let's quickly explain how the colors in here work. If I just quickly add a ramp, gradient ramp onto our layer, let's just bring that down to there and this one up to here. So you see a very harsh black white split. And then let's go back to our comp one or whatever our composition is called. Go back to our adjustment layer and now you will see that the footage or image beneath is being distorted. And what you will see is that the color black, when I move this horizontal number upwards or higher, the black will go to the right and the white will go to the left. Same with the horizontal. If I bring this number up, the black will go down and the white will go up. So anything in between will be a sort of a fade between. And when it's bang in the middle, which is 50% gray, it doesn't go anywhere. So if I go back to our glass map and just sort of fade these off, 
So there's sort of a nice gradient between. So in the middle here somewhere will be that 50% gray. Back to our comp. And now when I adjust these, you will see a nice feathered distortion between the two colors. So that is essentially what we're doing here. What we're doing is placing black and white layers on our glass, depending on where we want our distortion to happen. So for us, we do want most of it in the middle to be 50% gray. And then around the edge, we're going to create black and white distortions, depending on where and what we want to happen on the edge. So let's just delete this gradient ramp. So it's back to 50% gray. And I'm going to add on our glass layer a, where is it? Yep, layer style and an inner glow, inner glow. Here we go. Let's drop down to our inner glow. Let's change this to white and the opacity up to 100, fill opacity, and then let's increase the size. There we go, so it's nice and feathered. Let's go back to our comp one to see that, how that's looking. And straight away, I can see this is looking really nice, especially down here where it's nice and curved here. So now we can adjust our numbers, depending on what we're after. The more distorted, the more curved or sharp the angle looks on your glass. So if you want it to be nice and subtle, have a lower number, if you want it to be really harsh and a big number, just be aware that it can look quite unrealistic if you ramp it up too much. So I'm sort of happy with it roughly there. And now we can also go back to our map and we can increase or decrease our size. And we can even play with our choke if we wanted it to be a sort of a, a harsher line and less feathered. Let's go back to our comp. That's not too bad, but I preferred it feathered, so I'm just going to drop down that choke and just increase that size slightly. There we go. How's that looking? Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. So now let's go back to our glass map. And what I'm going to do is duplicate our glass layer. So I'm just going to do Control or Command D. Duplicate. And let's go back to our layer style in a glow for our second layer. Let's change the color to black. And because it's black, we want our blend mode to be multiply rather than screen. And I'm just going to really decrease this size just so it's a more of a stroke in the glow. Let's make it really small, but quite harsh. Yeah, roughly there. And what we want to do is on this second layer, we want to change the fill, whether it's in the effect or in the in the layer itself. We want to change that to white, so it's a full black and white layer. Now on this layer, we can change the blending mode to multiply. So now that blends with the layer beneath, so we just have that black stroke. Let's go back to our comp one, and there we go. So what that's doing is, because of the black-white split on the very edge, so it's feathered white, but then it's got a harsh black line. As we know, they're opposites from each other. So it does add an extra layer. If I just zoom in slightly. It's also got a harsh edge on the very outside. So this is where we're in a very good position now. We can just go back and forth between our composition, our main composition and our glass map, and we can add as many layers as we want. We can adjust our white feather on our black edge, we can we can do whatever we want in here essentially until we're happy with how our, our main glass is looking in our main composition. But I'm just going to move on for now and what I'm going to do is in our main composition, I'm just going to create a new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, or we could duplicate our previous one. And again, select our glass map for our track map. And here we're just going to add some color grading. So I'm just going to get our brightness and contrast, bring this on. I'm just going to call this layer CC for color control. And let's just bring up our contrast and our brightness slightly. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. 
And then you can even add a tint if you wanted your glass to have a, a color or a tint to it. I'm just going to I'm just going to see what works and if I'm happy. I might turn this off after, but it's always worth having a little play. So let's see what a blue tint looks like. I'm just going to make it a harsh blue. Then I'm just going to bring down the amount of tint. So it's quite low. So maybe 25. It's a very subtle blue tint, but yeah, I don't think that's too bad. And then our next step is to find our glass map in our project, or we can right click and reveal in our project. We're going to duplicate. And then let's open this up. Then let's turn off or delete our bottom layer, just so we have our very top layer with the white and the black stroke, but we want the reverse of this. So let's change our fill to black. And then let's find our inner glow and change this back to white or to white. Not forgetting to change our blend mode to screen, there it is. So now we have a black layer with a white stroke. Let's go back to our main composition and let's drag in our glass map two, drag that into the very top and let's put our blending mode to add. And let's just bring down the opacity slightly to maybe 30. See what that is, yeah, it's not too bad. All we're doing here is just adding a slight reflection on the very edge where it would catch light differently than the front would. So you could even, you could even turn back on that layer underneath if you wanted to, but have the inside black. So that's a nice perfect white edge. Go back to our main composition and you'll see that you have a nice white reflection around the edge, kind of on that curve. So, so maybe that's a better way of doing it actually, of having that second layer rather than that top one. But let's just drop that down to 20. Yeah, okay, that's not too bad at all. So one last thing that I always tend to do with glass, and it's because one of the clients I've worked for in the past always likes this sort of effect, is to, let's grab the pen tool. Let's just draw a nice curve sort of just catches the top edge around here. So roughly like this, but let's make this white. Okay. Let's just call that shine. Select our glass map from our track map. There we go. So now I have it, I'm just going to go to our path quickly. There you go. Let's drag that down to it's about there. Let's put this on add. Let's drop the opacity down to, I don't know, quite subtle, maybe 15. Yeah, I think that's working quite well. Let's just play this through. And there we have it. We have some nice realistic looking glass created entirely in After Effects. I hope you found that useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.